so, um, you know, as moms, <laughs> when the truth hurts, um, I've learned that those painful truths come both as we, well, in three ways. You, you overhear those painful truths as moms, for sure. You also receive them directly, and then you also learn them. And I'm just going to give you an example of, of each of those. So the uh, painful truth that was just sort of uh, overheard one time was when my six-year-old son, my youngest one at the time, he was playing soccer, and <clears throat> he just got beamed right in the stomach or the groin. I have no idea. I wasn't even paying attention because I was texting or something on the sidelines. <laughs> and uh, he comes running towards me, and he's crying, and, I, and I'm there by myself because my husband's at another soccer game with some of his, um, or with uh, some of our other kids. <laughs> I'm totally nervous. I'm sorry. Okay, let me get it out. Of this. So I'm there by myself. I'm freaking out because he doesn't seem to stop crying, and there are no subs. So he either has to go in or we're screwed. So I'm like, buddy, it's going to be okay. Stop crying. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And he says, um, I, I, I'm just, I can't do it anymore. I'm just going to die. And I said, you know what, Nate? How about this? How about you remember that your team needs you and you are kicking serious ass out there. And he, in his six-year-old face, just looks at me and he's like, oh, you said the bad word. <laughs> and I said, I know, I know. And he goes, well, I'm telling dad. And I said, then that's fine, go ahead. So he goes out there, he scores a goal, they win the game, and we get home to dinner. We're all sitting around on one of those rare nights where it was the five of us and my two older kids tell about the good things that happened at their day. And then my younger guy says, can I tell about my day? Sure, Nate, go ahead. Can I say a swear word? <laughs> so my two older kids are like, no, no, we're not allowed to say swear words in the house. And my husband's like, no. And I said, oh, it's okay this time. It's all right. I, I got this one. And my husband's like, what? And I said, it's fine. So my older son covers his ears. Like, I'm not gonna listen to this. We don't swear. I'm that little guy, six years old. He goes, I'm gonna tell my story now. And I said, you go ahead, Nate, you're fine. You can tell your story, it's okay. And he looks right at his older brother and he goes, Henry, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> this last summer, well, just this past summer, um, he's 11 now, but when he was in fifth grade, he was um, in that family living thing that, you know, they talk about penis, 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 vagina, 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 and then you never hear about anything. So I wondered if anything really absorbed in his brain. But we're sitting there in the living room this summer, just, I don't know what, doing, it was too hot to go to the pool or something crazy like that, and he says to me, can I tell you something? I said, yeah. And he goes, no offense, but this Happy Meal toy, it kind of looks like your uterus. <laughs> this is the actual Happy Meal toy. <laughs> and it's true. It was, it was, it's, it's a painful truth. It does. Except I don't have a hologram of a, di of a, of a dragon on it from our trainer dragon, too. <laughs> But um, he told me that, and I, I said, you're right, actually, except I wasn't sure if I could share my own painful truth with him in that um, I don't think he has ever seen my uterus, nor do I think he ever will. And I you know, don't have any of that stuff on there, but that wasn't something I was willing to share with him. Then, you know, this, this whole thing about painful truths, I, it really got me thinking about how we handle motherhood and this this constant weight and this feeling of being, um, not doing it right. And when I stopped and I thought about all of the different ways that I have tried and tried and tried to just be as good as I can, I realized as a young, young, young mom that there is no way. There will always be somebody that is going to be doing things better and better and better than me at a lot of things at any given time. And in that discovery, that painful truth, 
it kind of helped release a lot of tension and stress. Um, it doesn't erase it, but it helps me see the humor in things because there will always be somebody who is more able and beautiful and courageous and dedicated and educated and fabulous. Um, somebody who is absolutely more generous than me. Somebody who is more hilarious than me. There will be somebody who's more intelligent. There will be somebody who is more jubilant. Um, there will absolutely always be my A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Um, I was on the J's. K. More kind-hearted, more light-hearted. <laughs> there will definitely be somebody more mature than me, but fuck her because she is just a loser. <laughs> there are always going to be people who are more nurturing than me, more optimistic, more professional, more qualified, more resourceful, more successful, more tolerant, more unflappable, <laughs> definitely more voluptuous, more well-rounded than me. There will always be somebody who's more youthful, and there will always be somebody who is more zen than me. And yet, the very, very truth at the core of me is that I get to be a mom to these three kids, and I don't ever have to tell them the painful truth that I don't have a dragon hologram on my uterus. <laughs>